everyone, this is Pia Yoga and today I'm bringing you this tutorial on how to do Bakasana or Crow Pose. This is an arm balance that requires a lot of strength in our body, especially in our arms, in our abs. It requires as well a lot of concentration, being present, it requires to let go of our fears. We normally are very fearful to do all these arm balances because we think we don't have the strength, because we think we may fall. And that's the beauty of practicing these more difficult asanas, that we have to let go, that we have to overcome these fears. It also requires a lot of practice, so even though you have practiced it for a long time and you haven't been able to hold it or to do it, don't get discouraged. It takes time, it takes practice, and the most important part is that you are getting a feedback from the pose. Which area of your body needs to get more strength? or you understand where do you need to put more weight of your body uh, and how to move. Most important part is that you understand and that's why we are, I'm bringing you this tutorial here. So let's start. First thing first again, always to have your, one, uh, your body warm up is very important to avoid injuries and to have more strength. So you can start with five sun salutations or if you are already warm up, we can start. Our hands are going to be our foundation in this pose. So the position of our hands are very important. The hands spraying the fingers wide will give us more balance. Now, I want you to activate those hands. So the four corners of your palm are going to be really rooting down. And the fingertips active. You can even do it like if you were grabbing the mat. The index knuckle can lift up or you can press the fingertips the fingers completely down. The most important thing is that they are active. If someone is going to bring them up, they wouldn't be able because you are super active there on your hands. Now, the distance. You can put them shoulder distance apart or even better, a little bit wider to have more opening on our shoulders. Even our rotating them a little bit out. Same thing, same concept. It gives us more opening on the shoulders. So on the mat, we can start first with Malasana, feet together, heels down, even though if they are not touching the mat, open the knees and reach the heels down, even if you are not touching the mat. Now hips down, head down, they want to be on, at the same level, and then you can bring the hands back. Pushing the hands down will help you to bring the hips and forehead even lower. Now placing the hands on the mat firmly, remembering the hand position, elbows stays in, squeezing in, don't let them go out. If you start to bring the fingertips too in, your elbows are going to go toward the side. Again, I want the opposite, elbows is squeezing in. Now our balance point is going to be our hand. Right now, we have every, every part of our body behind that um, balance point. So we need to move some weight forward so we can bring our feet up. So we need to look forward, forget about your feet and just feel the weight on your hands. Move forward, walk the feet forward a little bit. Now I feel more the weight on my hands already, on my knuckles and on my fingertips. I keep pushing my head up. I forgot about my feet. I bring one foot up point it up and squeeze that knee toward the um, arm, sustaining for five seconds, rounding the back, feeling the core active, and then bringing it back down, we rest, we take a couple of breaths, and we do the other side, lean forward, fingertips active, bringing one foot up, squeezing the knee toward the arm, rounding the back and feeling the core strength, and then rest. Here with this exercise we are building strength and we are preparing our body to get into the pose, to get confident that, that we already have the weight on our hands. Now let's do the full pose and then I will give you more options. I won't use for now the block but I will show you that option later on. So again, I like to start from here. This is the way I was taught by my teacher from Skanda Yoga because this way of entering into the pose requires more core strength and more inner tight strength. So I'm not just using the balance, but the strength of my body. 
So I walk forward, I come lower, my hips are still low. I squeeze one knee toward the arm and then the other when I feel the weight on my hands. And by squeezing the knees then, I bring the knees a little bit higher toward my arms. Push the hands away from the floor and round in the back. So again here, I'm feeling my core active, strength. There is another way to enter into the pose, which is bringing the knees already into or behind the armpits. What happened with this uh, way of entering? It's okay, for some people it's easier. However, again, we are not using too much strength at the beginning. So, here, we lean forward and we are basically using more just balance. Right? My back is flat, so my abdomen is not so active. But then from here, I can start to round the back, push the hands away, and same thing, working in to create the strength. Now, another option is to use a block if it's very difficult for you to put the knees uh, uh, higher than your elbows. If this is too difficult, you can bring your heels up and step up on top of the block. So this way, now, my knees are higher. I never want my knees next to my elbows because if I squeeze, I can damage my um, elbow joint. Good. Another option is to put a blanket or a pillow in front of you, so if you are scared to fall down. However, the head is very important. If you look forward and push the head slightly up, you will have more range of motion if you fall. If you lose the balance here, boom, you put your hand. If you are looking down toward the blanket or toward the floor, if you fall, you immediately will hit on your face because you don't have too much space in between your head and the floor. That's why it's very, very important to keep pushing the head up and look forward. Again, we want to shift the weight from back forward. Elbows on top of the wrist. Squeezing the elbows, squeezing the knee, head up, looking forward, squeezing the knees, rounding the back. I feel the weight of my hands already first before bringing one foot up. When I'm firmly there, fingertips are pressing down, I lift one foot, bring it down, then the other, or if you are comfortable, place both, or bring both feet up. Now, if you already have the balance, work in to hold it for five breaths, and work in to pushing the hands away, strengthening the arm, that's why you need to push the hands down, and lean a little bit more forward, and round more the back, so you are activating those abs. Nice. And we all have them. <laughs> Good. So from here, here again, to here, bringing the feet up, rounding the back as much as you can, and then even you can play here, bringing one foot down toward the wrist, then the other. These are things that you can start to do. Boom. Another way to play and build the strength is from Bakasana, bringing here again, rounding the back, and then Bending the elbows a little bit, kissing the, the mat, and lifting it. I read, already did the Spanish version, so I'm exhausted here right now, and whew, coming back up. Good. Another option as well is to do the transition, very famous transition from crow pose to shikshasana. I'm not going to demonstrate it today because I want to focus in bakasana, but Stay there in Bakasana at least five breaths, always, before doing any transition. And finally, for the jumping back, if you are in Bakasana and you already hold it for five breaths, you need to know that the feet or the legs will go back. You are going to land in Chaturanga, right? So you need to halfway, same thing, in front of your hand. So you need to move your chest and head forward as your legs shoot back. So I'm going to demonstrate it, and you will see what I'm talking about. And most importantly, you have to be secure of what you are going to do. So, here in Bakasan, I'm not going too high, just to demonstrate. So head is still forward, chest is still forward. Don't let it go back, and immediately, you shoot. So you are going to land in Chaturanga. 
So basically, when I'm in cross, my hands are already in the position of Chaturanga, right? I already have my chest forward. So what I, you don't, what you what, uh, so what you cannot do is to from here try to bring the chest back because you will fall. So again, chest forward and head forward. Doing it without thinking, your body will know what to do. Chest forward and heels back. Nice. So that was all for Bakasan. I'm already sweating. I'm already feeling my arms active. Remember, it's very important to warm up before, to keep practicing, to get motivated. And as well, if you have comments, questions, please let me know. And if you like it, please like it and share it with others. Namaste.